Hello folks and welcome to an Inkdependence.com brief video review. Uh, this one's going to be a little less brief than some of the other ones. We've got a pen today. I don't do too many pens on the blog, uh, although I do try to do them every once in a while. Um, anywho, I got this one from Levenger and this is a big surprise. I got one of their catalogs and said, you know, I really like Levenger. Maybe I'll reach out and see if they want to do some reviews. And uh, fortunately, they said, yes, we'd totally like you to review something. So. They said, uh, we'll send you out a True Writer Select. I hadn't heard of the True Writer Select. I wasn't really aware of it. Uh, but, uh, man, this is a really good pen. There's the, uh, there's the long and short of it. So, let's check this out. We'll do a little unboxing. Comes in a sleeve, as uh, usual. Uh, it's kind of a cardboard sleeve. Toss that off to the side. The rest of this box is pretty nice, though. Uh, you end up with this nice uh, black cardboard box. Levenger embossed very nicely. Kind of almost, I think it's like letter-pressed, actually, uh, on the top. And you open that guy up, and you have this uh, nice fabric-y stuff. The front of the box comes down, so you don't have to worry about turning the thing upside down or whatever to take it out. And you can take out this nice wooden box on the inside. Uh, this is a pretty nice box, really. I like this flip-down feature. It makes it super easy to take the rest of the box out of the box. Uh, but this is a lot of boxes, right? So we have felt on the bottom here. The rest of this is uh, nice hard wood. And you can see there's some really nice wood grain in here. It's a two-tone box. Flip this guy open, and voila, there's the pen. Uh, I got the Mediterranean color. Uh, it's held in there pretty securely. You can take out this piece. There's a Levenger uh, uh, warranty sheet and such in here. Let's see if there's anything else in this. I didn't actually look at it. Oh, pen care, yep. I know how to use ink cartridges and stuff, so I didn't really look at this. It tells you how to use the converter, so if you don't really know what you're doing, uh, this will help you out. That's cool. Uh, has the Levenger bottle there um, represented. Levenger bottle has a really great bottle. It's got this inkwell in there, which actually isn't shown in this picture, but it does have a nice little inkwell in it. So, um, One problem with this, in fact, the only problem with this box, and I'm totally going to keep this box around, it's a very nice box, is that it's kind of shallow, and when you put the pen in there, you can't put a cartridge or whatever underneath it. So that's kind of a minor thing, if you ask me. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it is a thing to be aware of. All right. So you take this off of its nice little pillow here. And we'll... Uh, Say goodbye to this box. Oh, this is a very swanky box. Man, that's man. If you're uh, getting somebody like a graduation gift or something, maybe at this time, or uh, I don't know, um, wedding present perhaps. Man, that would be uh, that's a good box. All right, so I'll set that aside as well. Thank you, box. All right, so here's the True Rider Select. It is quite a lot bigger than the regular True Rider from what I've seen. I don't have a True Rider to compare it to, uh, but this is a pretty big pen. Uh, let's see what I've got around here to compare it to. Uh, here it is next to a uh, Lamy All-Star. So it's quite a bit longer than the All-Star capped. Uh, you can see that there. Uh, well, let me see. Kind of square them up. Yeah, quite a bit longer than it capped. Uh, what else have I got around here? I've got this uh, Schaefer Intensity. It's about the same size as the uh, All-Star, really. Smaller than this one. Um, let's see. What else is big? As, what else is as big as this? Oh, you know what might be really big? I didn't think about this before. I probably should have. Let's see, what did I do with my, my least favorite pen ever? Ah, oh, here they are. Uh, the Ahab. So this is the Newler's Ahab. You can see the Ahab next to this is actually smaller. It's, it's smaller than the True Rider Select as well. So um, if you think the Ahab is a huge pen, the True Rider Select is actually a bit bigger. So this is a quite a large pen. All right. So um, it's got uh, very nice chrome detailing around there. It just says Levenger around the side. And around the back, it says select in a nice script. Uh, the top and bottom also have this uh, chrome bit. And also a very nice finial on the end here. And jewel cap and such. These are very nice to machine. The fit and finish on this pen are great. There's no like weird rough edges or any of that stuff. It's, uh, it's finished very nicely. Uh, the clip is uh, kind of a standard clip. It's pretty stiff, but it'll totally hold your pen securely onto a pocket if you want to put it on there. Uh, it does have this little springy deal in there, but it's not like a... Uh, spring steel clip like you'll get in some Franklin Kristoffs and um, uh, Faber Castells and such like that. It's just a regular clip. Uh, I think it looks nice. The detail is good. It's got this little extra bit here. I think it looks cool. So there we go. The acrylic that this pen is made out of is kind of a very nice swirly blue. Uh, you can see uh, some of the detail there. We get some light on the subject. Yeah, it's a very nice swirly blue. It's not in your face. It's not super loud. It's not kind of uh, hideous like that uh, Ahab I have there. Um, but um, this is really good. All right, so let's open it up. It doesn't take very many turns to open, so if you don't like pens that take a lot of turns to open, that's great. Uh, one thing I noticed about this pen is that the threads are fantastic. Um, if you, uh, let's see, I'll focus in there a little bit. 
And you'll see on the blog some other pictures that this pen has very nice flat threads. So if you're somebody who holds the pen, you know, here-ish, and a lot of people do, especially with like these, um, these larger number six nibs. This is a big nib on this pen. It's not crazy when you compare it to the size of the pen. I think it kind of fits pretty well, but um, if you hold it a bit further up, the threads aren't going to bother you because they're all flattened out. They aren't going to, like, you know, cut into your finger or anything nasty there. Um, you also have a very nice chrome section here, um, which is uh, metal, of course. It does pick up fingerprints. You can see there's my fingerprint if you want to, like, I don't know, impersonate me or something. Uh, but uh, it seems to wipe clean very quickly, and it's not going to be, uh, it doesn't bother me too much to have fingerprints on the, the section. That's where fingers belong, if you ask me. All right, um, you get kind of a standard uh, feed on this guy, nothing super special there, but it is a very nice feed. It does keep up very well with whatever you're writing, uh, so, you know, no problems there at all. The nib is pretty simple. It doesn't have a lot of garish nonsense on it. Some nibs are um, overdone, I think. This one, however, looks pretty good. It's got um, some very nice little detail here. Uh, it says Levenger down the center, medium, and then uh, Germany across the bottom, and that's it. That's all you got. I've got a little bit of nib creep. Let's see if I can do this here. No, I'm not gonna be able to do it without getting ink all over my fingers. Um, this is uh, inked up with uh, Mont Blanc's 90 year gray, so uh, I got a little bit of nib creep there. That's nothing big. All right, so there you go. There's the nib and section. There's the threads. Uh, this acrylic is also very nice. Um, now if you look inside here, you'll notice that the threads on the inside of the cap are uh, sort of drilled into the cap. <clears throat> I might have preferred to have them be a little bit stiffer, but uh, uh, I'm kind of, I don't know, I, I'm a little bit on the fence there. If we'd had like metal threads and then metal on the inside, that'd be great. But uh, the hookup I think is just fine. Um, it feels a little soft. I don't want to over tighten it, but I think this band is strong enough to help me uh, keep from breaking the pen. But, uh, you know, it gets in there pretty good. It's not going to come loose. So, uh, you know, got a good bite. All right, so there you go. That's the, the cap and such. Oh, I'm running out of battery on my iPad. All right, there we go. There's that business. Very nicely done. Very nice finishing. I'm a big fan of that. All right. So let's open this up, see what's inside. On the inside, you do have metal threads, so you're not going to be eyedroppering this pen. Um, it's got a sort of standard converter, but their converters are very nice. It's a good converter. It's got a good smooth action. Uh, I don't have much of the sink left in here. I've been using this pen quite a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, Levenger does have good pistons. I mean, they're regular old piston converters. And, of course, you take that out, then uh, take that just like... Anything else, it doesn't screw in the, the converter, it's just a regular old push-in converter. Um, so there you go. No big deal. The nice metal threads in there. And if you look inside the body, you actually have metal threads on the inside of the body as well. Um, this is the problem, one of the problems I had with the Ahab is that the, uh, the threads all came apart and it doesn't really close up very well anymore because the material is too soft. Well, this one keeps you from having that problem because it's got metal threads inside there. Um, so good on you, Levenger, for doing metal threads. I don't know if the rest of their pens do that. It's actually the only Levenger pen I have. I don't have any others. We don't have any Levenger stores around here, so I really can't get my hands on them. And I'm sort of a hands-on pen buyer, mostly. All right. So that's uh, that's this pen right here. I'll show you how it writes real quick. Let me grab some paper. Uh, this one will do. Let's see. Pen review. Oh, well, actually, this is the uh, review sheet from this pen. So... Uh, as I mentioned on the blog, you'll check out, you, I'm sure you'll check out the blog at inkdependence.com. It's got a great nib. It's actually a, a surprisingly good nib. I was kind of shocked by how good this nib was. Uh, right out of the, the package, I didn't clean it or any of that nonsense. I wanted to see how it works straight out of the factory. And the answer is it works really well. So no worries there. Um, it also has kind of an expensive feel to it. It's not crazy heavy or anything. Uh, the weight is really here in the section and not in the body of the pen. Oh, by the way, you can post this pen if that's your... Um, that's your want. Uh, you can post it, but it becomes kind of ludicrous when you do post it. Uh, where's my other super long posted pen? That would be my favorite Castell um, uh, basic, which is hiding for me out oh, here. It's in my to be cleaned pile. I keep my pens in these little boxes. Uh, I think they're like called pretty good boxes or something like that, but uh, here we go. This is the other one that's really long when you cap it, or rather post it. Um, and I think these two are pretty much the same when you do that. Oh, no. <laughs> it's actually shorter than the, than the basic, which is interesting. Uh, the basic is a, not a super heavy pen either, but this one is, um, you know, a lot shorter when you post it. Let's see how they are when you then post it. I didn't think to measure these two together. No, it's actually a little bit, it's about the same as a Faber-Castell basic. So if you like the basic, 
Um, this is a fine length. I didn't realize the basic was so long in the body, but it's such a light pin that I didn't really notice. All right, let's count that guy up. Uh, but you know, bottom line is I wouldn't really post this pen, not because I'm worried about it damaging the finish. It's you know all uh, resin on the inside. Just because that's, you know, it's pretty heavy. That's really long. And I have large hands. So if this is long in my hand, um, <laughs> my wife is like, this pen is too big for me. So it's probably not much of a lady's pen. She's got decently sized hands for a lady, but uh, mine are much larger. All right, so it's got this nice expensive feel. It's got a great nib. What else we got here? Uh -huh. um, classy and interesting. Like I said, it's not really in your face. I think it'll fit in pretty well anywhere, this pen. It's very nice. Let me just cap this box out of the and leave that. But uh, I think it fits in. It sits nicely on the desk. It's not going to roll away because of that big uh, clip there. The finishing, as I said, is really good. The cons. Now, the, uh, one of the issues with this pen is that it is fairly spendy. At that price point, which is uh, 169 I believe, there's a lot of competition for the 169 price point. So it is a little bit spendy. But for that price, you are getting a really good pen. It is a steel nib. It's not gold. Um, I'm not a, a gold elitist. I think that uh, steel nibs are often just as good. In fact, this is probably one of the best. This is the best non-worked nib I think I have. I have my Masayama nibs and such that I've gotten done on my Franklin Kristoffs are uh, maybe better, but also those are custom nibs. This is straight out of the factory, so no knock there. The metal section is maybe going to turn some people off, but I've used this pen a lot and I haven't had any problem with it slipping in my grip. Also, if you hold it a little bit up, further up on the threads, no problem. And it's also huge, so that might be a con for some folks. Um, I've got writing samples and such with it, with uh, oh, Lake Placid Blue. I'm glad that's what's in there. I had totally forgotten. Um, I've got this uh, sort of next to a bunch of other things. True Writer Select, and then my Pilot Custom 74, which is actually a very wet, wide nib for a medium. I had it spread a little bit because it was being kind of anemic out of the factory. See, that's a pen I paid 160 ish for, I think. And uh, the True Rider, I think, is a bit, is better. I, if I had to put the two side by side, I like it better. Um, but I think the medium nib on the True Rider is a little bit narrow. It's on the finer side of mediums. So keep that in mind. Uh, I don't know what their fines are like. I actually, you can go and buy um, different nibs. I think they're 30 bucks for the True Rider Select nibs. Make sure you get the Select nibs. They're bigger than the regular Selects. Uh, I think the Select is probably a five. This is a sixth nib. Um, then you can see it there next to like a pretty uh, average Monteverde Artistic Crystal medium. So. You know, it's kind of in that realm, but it's a little bit finer, I believe, than those two. So, there you go. All right. Um, this is a very fancy sort of uh, uh, pen. So, if you're going to get something a little executive, go for it. All right. So, this one, oh, there's a little bit of a skip there. Uh -huh. It has been sitting on my desk for a little bit, and this is a new ink. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of almost out. Uh, but I haven't really had any problems. There's no particularly, uh, particular line variation on this. It's a fairly stiff nib, uh, so you're not going to really get any flex out of it. It is a, a steel nib, so... Whoops. Spoke too soon on that no skipping thing, no hard starts. I haven't had any hard starts. That little bit of skip was all I had. Uh, there we go. Now yeah, it's going. No problems. Uh, and it is very smooth. You can hear just a little bit there, but no toothiness. It's not catching on the paper. This is, of course, very nice Rhodia. It's probably their nicer, uh, their nicest paper. So it's 1934 Rhodia stuff. Uh, but um, yeah, this is a pen that I, um, so I'm a little bit uh, torn on recommending a buy or not on these kinds of pens that I get for free as samples. Uh, thank you very much for Levenger for sending this to me. Uh, but I didn't shell out my own money for it. So can I say that you ought to? Well, this is what I'll say. I think it's a darn good pen for that price range. Uh, and I do think it's a bit better than other pens in that price range. Um, I mean, around there you've got, uh, if you get full retail, the Vanishing Point is probably around that that place, maybe a little bit less. Um, I don't love my Vanishing Point. I'm thinking of maybe getting the nib worked on a little bit. This is a medium, and I don't really like the medium nib. Um, what else you got in that price point? Um, Much else sitting around that's right in that price point. I'll see how big, how, how big it is compared to this back. Ah, good. So it's about the same size as the Twisby back 700. So um, there you go. There's your size, the most accurate and common size comparison. Um, but I do like it better than I like this uh, Custom 74, which you're going to have to familiar with what that is. And it is this guy right here. Um, 
the custom 74 i've got a cartridge in here because man i hate the converter they've got the um oh what is it con 70 i think is what that converter is called it's like a pump converter which scares the crap out of me because you've got this you know nice gold nib on there and you have it in the ink well then you have to like pump on a converter it's uh, i don't like it um but i think that for my money really the levenger true rider select is better than this and they're about the same price so anyway that's that's what i can say would i buy it yeah i think i would i think i would um oh the other stuff i have that's in that price range are all franklin christophs those are kind of a different bird they're all handmade so um you know there's that all right so that's pretty much what i've got to say about this true rider select well done levenger thank you very much for sending this out to me i'd be happy to review any other levenger pens i'd like to be able to compare it to some other stuff uh, but uh you know, if you're on the fence about one of these, I say kind of jump. If the price point isn't scaring you and you'd like a big pin, it's got a little bit of heft, but not too much because it is a resin barrel, uh, not all metal. You could do far worse. In fact, most of the things you're going to get at this price point are going to be, at, you know, uh, this is going to be up there it's in terms of quality. I, I would definitely put it up against anything there. All right, so there you go. Uh, I am Mike. This is inkdependence.com. If you like what I'm doing here, and want to uh, help out the blog with some support, go to patreon.com slash inkdependence to find out how you can do that. And uh, go to inkdependence.com to check out the full review of this pen along with lots of pictures and uh, such like that. So, um, I'll see you around. Thanks very much.